Hello again everyone. Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. We are in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4, picking up our study in verse 1 today. And this is our sixth study in the book of Deuteronomy. Now let's begin with prayer. Lord, we ask that our hearts are good ground, that we would hear your word and understand your word, and that your word would bear fruit in our lives 100-fold. In Jesus' name, amen. Moses is speaking to the Israelites and is getting close to the time for them to enter into the Holy Land. And let's begin reading in verse 1. Moses says, Hear now, O Israel, the decrees and laws I'm about to teach you. Follow them so that you may live and may go in and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. Moses says, Obey these laws that you may live. Not talking about a spiritual life or eternal life, because that cannot be earned by keeping the law or doing anything else. That kind of life spiritual and eternal life must be received in response to our faith. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as uh, righteousness. And so Moses is saying obey God so that you can enjoy life in the Holy Land and so that that life will continue a good long time. Verse 2 Moses says, Do not add to what I command you, and do not subtract from it, but keep the commands of the Lord your God that I give you. In other words, do not make new laws and put them on the same level as God's word, and don't remove any of God's word either. And right along with that command goes this. God is saying, do not neglect to do what I command and do not do what I forbid. In other words, don't add to my word. Don't take anything away. Verse 3. You saw with your own eyes what the Lord did at Baal Peor. The Lord your God destroyed from among you everyone who followed the Baal of Peor. And Baal was a pagan idol. And this is referring to an incident that happened uh, in the history of Israel not, not too long ago. The women of Midian had enticed some of the men of Israel into the sin of fornication and into the sin of idolatry. Well, the Israelites did not get away with it. God executed 24,000 Israelites because of their sin. And Moses is encouraging the survivors in Israel to remember that. And then he also says in verse 4, But all of you who held fast to the Lord your God are still alive today. And those who remain faithful to the Lord and had not sinned. And the thing with Baal, Peor, they did not die. And that's a pretty amazing statement because several months had gone by since that incident and within those months Israel also fought in a war and yet not one of the faithful died in the war or by disease or anything else and so God preserved those who were faithful to him verse 5 see I have taught you decrees and laws as the Lord my God commanded me so that you may follow them in the land you are entering to take possession of it. Moses did what he had just commanded the Israelites to do. He stuck to the word. He taught them the word of God just as he had been given it by God. Moses did not add to it. He did not take away from it. Verse 6. Observe them carefully. For this will show your wisdom and understanding to the nations 
who will hear about all these decrees and say surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people God designed us and he put us together body, soul and spirit so he knows what will make us function and happy and the law of God is sort of like an owner's manual and the law that he gave Israel was tailored made for human beings if they teach it and they live it Israel will be blessed better than any other nation people will hear about it and they'll say oh those Israelites sure have their act together verse 7 what other nation is so great as to have their gods near them the way the Lord our God is near us whenever we pray to him God is so great he is so lofty so exalted and yet he drew near to little Israel and he was near them in a couple of ways he was near by relation through the covenant he made with them he was near by his presence in other words he was there in a visible form in the form of a cloud he was near them anytime they wanted they could talk to God and he would hear their prayers and give them what they needed what a unique relationship Israel had with the living God and it is surpassed only by the relationship that we have with God as Christians today he was with Israel but he is in Christians verse 8 and what other nation is so great as to have such righteous decrees and laws as this body of laws I am setting before you today no law no code of law devised by man was able to lead its people in the ways of righteousness and fairness and justice and truth like the law that God gave to Moses and no law was ever designed to keep people from hurting each other each other's persons and property like the law that God gave to Moses no wonder God said keep it and you will live what a gift this law from God is not just to Israel but to us and no we can't get saved by keeping the law but it sure does give us wise directions it sure does cause us to prosper in this life verse 9 only be careful and watch yourselves closely so that you do not forget the things your eyes have seen or let them slip from your heart as long as you live teach them to your children and to their children after them in other words never forget God's word and the miraculous way it was delivered to Moses on Mount Sinai never forget the punishment God inflicted on those who broke it and never forget the blessing that came on those who kept it verse 10 remember the day you stood before the Lord your God at Horeb that would be Mount Sinai when he said to me assemble the people before me to hear my words so that they may learn to revere me as long as they live in the land and may teach them to their children one thing is for sure one thing for sure they should remember and that is the day and the way God gave them the law on Mount Sinai it was a terrifying experience for the Israelites they saw the fire the smoke and the lightning they heard the thunder and the angelic trumpet blast that announced God's arrival and he was trying to tell them something he was trying to tell them that his law was important and it was serious and that he meant business and they got the message verse 11 you came near and stood at the foot of the mountain while it blazed with fire to the very heavens with black clouds and deep darkness they stood at the foot of Mount Sinai and they watched with terror as God gave his law to Moses amidst this thick darkness and the blazing fire and the billowing smoke verse 12 then the Lord spoke to you out of the fire you heard the sound of words but saw no form 
there was only a voice now they didn't just hear a noise they heard God speak words and they understood those words when they are at Mount Sinai at the foot of that mountain God's voice thundered but it was as clear as my voice is to you today probably clearer verse 13 he declared to you his covenant the ten commandments which he commanded you to follow and then wrote them on two stone tablets the law is called a covenant or a contract and that's what a covenant is and it was called a covenant because two parties were involved there was God who promised long life and happiness to Israel if they obeyed and there was Israel who promised to keep God's law verse 14 and the Lord directed me at that time to teach you the decrees and laws you are following in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess God gave Moses the ceremonial laws and the judicial laws as well as the Ten Commandments now the Ten Commandments that, that is the moral law and that law is timeless the ceremonial law was designed for Israel in the Holy Land during Old Testament days verse 15 you saw no form of any kind the day the Lord spoke to you at Horeb out of the fire therefore watch yourselves be very careful God didn't want Israel to make an image and worship it as God and so he was very careful he did not appear to them in any form that might lead them down that direction verse 16 so that you do not become corrupt and make for yourselves an idol an image of any shape whether formed like a man or a woman and so any image no matter how spectacular or beautiful it may be is a far, far cry from God and all his perfections that's why to worship anything even as a representation of God is an insult to God it is a corruption of the worshiper and it is a corruption of worship and God doesn't want any part of that verse 17 and it's not just men don't make an image of a man or a woman verse 17 says or like any animal on earth or any bird that flies in the air and there really aren't many animals that haven't been worshipped by someone somewhere some people say oh well that group they worship eagles but they really are worshipping the same God that Christians worship they worship the birds and they worship nature but they are really worshipping the true God no they are not God certainly doesn't see it as worship of him if anything it is idolatry verse 18 or like any creature that moves along the ground or any fish in the water below well when you talk about the idolatry of the heathens you can almost always include the serpent and of course the Bible teaches that the devil is behind all idol worship and the serpent is a clear reference to the serpent Satan possessed in the Garden of Eden and used to deceive Eve it seems to me that the serpent is the devil's badge of honor and God says don't worship it or anything else that crawls or swims verse 19 and when you look up to the sky and see the sun and the moon and the stars and all the heavenly array do not be enticed into bowing down to them and worshiping things the Lord your God has apportioned to all the nations under heaven and there's nothing wrong with looking at the sky and being in awe of the almighty God who made everything up there and I do that all the time but God warns us don't be led astray into worshiping those heavenly bodies don't look to them for direction they are a reflection of the tremendous God that's up there who created them and so let them if anything draw you closer to almighty God and appreciate him more verse 20 we'll stop with this today 
But as for you, the Lord took you and brought you out of the iron smelting furnace, out of Egypt, to be the people of his inheritance as you now are. And the smelting furnace refers to the fire that was used to melt silver or gold back in those days. Throw the silver, throw the gold into this hot furnace and it would melt and it would separate the impurities from the precious metal. Egypt is called Israel's furnace because it was hot. I mean, it was miserable. It's called Israel's furnace because of the misery and the cruelty and the slavery that they lived with down in Egypt for so many years. But God delivered them from that mess. He delivered them out of that furnace and has now brought them home almost. They're just about ready to take the land. We'll stop there today. Lord, teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Let the beauty of the Lord our God rest upon us, and establish the work of our hands for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Until next time, Mike Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse, reminding you to stay in the Word.